Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms and this is my old pan lubing stuff to lube my cast bullets up with and uh, I've just got it all, I got all my old lube packaged or poured up into some bigger molds packaged up getting ready to put this stuff away hopefully forever because I got a new Lyman lubricizer and uh, hopefully I'll be able to size and lubricate my bullets in one motion not have to worry about anything else again so uh, I just got it got it mounted here on the bench and I'm going to show you guys what it how it comes um, uh, when it comes new and how to set it up and get started using it so uh, let's all right get so this is the lubricizer uh, itself right here now um, I purchased mine from Midway USA and uh, I got the lubricizer and heater together. This is the 110 volt package. This little heater here is to help heat up the lube um, in order to help it feel better. So anyway, there's a, a couple of components that you need to be aware of that you need to purchase whenever you purchase the lubricizer. All right, one you're going to need your sizing die for whatever caliber you're going to be sizing. And you actually have to know what size you want because different calibers offer different size um, bullets. For instance, this is I'm, I'm doing 40 Smith & Wesson. This is a 401. Okay, so uh, there are a couple different options out there depending on what you're going to be loading, but this is the actual uh, die, the sizing die and lube uh, die for the Lyman Lubricizer for 40 Smith & Wesson. You'll see here these holes that are in the side of it that is where the actual wax will fill in to fill in around our grease groove on our bullets. And you can actually set it so that you can fill one or if you have um, uh, the bullets with multiple grease grooves in it, you can set it to where it goes all the way down and fills all the grooves. And because I've got the one groove, I'm just going to set mine to go down to fill in the one grease groove. That will eliminate a lot of excess grease coming out and things like that. So you'll need the lubricizer and then the sizing die. And another thing that you're also going to need is you're going to need what's called the top punch. The top punch is designed for different calibers and different sizes and different types of bullets. So whether it be a flat nose or a con concave or a um, round nose or what, so on and so forth. This one here is for the concave and it fits perfectly right down over there so it doesn't deform. The lubricizer actually pushes down and then comes back up instead of the Lee uh, sizing die that forces them all up one direction. All right, so you have to have a top punch too. That's probably the biggest downfall in the Lee lubricizer or the Lyman lubricizer is that you have to have a sizing die and a top punch for every caliber that you load. But um, I guess it could be worse. So I'm hoping that I get good experiences out of using this, uh, mainly because of the price that's paid for it. But uh, hopefully it speeds up production as well. So anyway, the, uh, the lubricizer itself is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, and then we'll get it set up and get ready to load in it. Uh, it comes um, disassembled partially. I've mounted it to my bench here with a couple of small lag bolts. You've got your uh, your actuating handle here that just screws right on and that works your action down. It'll push your bullet down and then down here at the bottom um, you actually have a plunger. Let me move this out of the way here. You actually have a plunger that when this comes back up it pushes back up and that is actually gonna when you push the, the bullet down into the sizing die, then that plunger will actually push it back up to where you can pull it out. So that's that's there too. Comes with a little wrench so that you can undo <clears throat> this here where your die actually sets down in there. But we have to take that out in a second. Now also your lube for the uh, lubricizer 4500 comes in sticks. 
Um, they're just round sticks, about four inches long and about an inch in diameter. They got a hole bored through them. And some of them require heat, some of them don't require heat. I've heard in the reviews that I've read is that the heat works best. Now these I just picked up, all right? Now, just because I wanted to be able to use it as soon as I got it. Um, these are about five bucks a piece. Um, and I have a recipe to make some of our own lube sticks um, for a lot less than that. And I'll be doing that video uh, here in the near future. Now to load your grease in your lubricizer, you have a little wrench that comes with it, a little ratchet wrench, and uh, it's kind of backwards. Um, your wrench will say in and out, all right, but it's actually backwards. If you want to open this up, you put it on the end, or the in, not the out, and just crank it, and the um, cap here will just pop right up. Once it pops loose, you can go ahead and just pull that off and then just keep cranking it and you'll see that our little press here will work its way out. Now one thing that I've heard through reviews is that these o-rings tend to wear out pretty easily and so I would recommend getting some o-rings before you start so that way if you have one that messes up you can go ahead and replace it. Now I've heard that there's these o-rings there's also an o-ring here and I'm pretty sure there's an o-ring down inside of here. So it might be something that you want to do. What we're going to do is wipe the manufacturer's packing grease off of it. And I've already stuck one of the lube sticks down in there. It just fits right down inside of the, the chamber there. I'm just going to wipe this off and then put a little bit of um, full synthetic motor oil. Same motor oil I use for lubrication on about everything on these o-rings I think that'll probably help the life of them and then we'll just stick it back down on here get it started clockwise righty tighty lefty loosey and then we're going to put it in the out position and crank it and we'll see that it goes right down in there. Now this is how we adjust the pressure on the lube itself to tell us how much lube or to tell it how much lube to force out of, out of it. So we're going to crank it down until we get a little snug. All right, about right there. And we'll put our cap back on here. And then that's all we have to do for now. Now we'll go ahead and install our seating die or our sizing die. For that, we'll just use this wrench here that comes with it to loosen up this nut. And I've heard these threads are really fine and it's a pain, so we're going to see how much of a pain it is. Wipe some of that oil off of there. A little bit too much packing grease, but that's okay. Now we put our sizing die right up through the bottom here, and they say it's hard to get it once you put it down in there to get it to for this to thread so what we're going to do is put our sizing dial on here and then push up on our press to help hold it down here and then we'll ease it down inside the groove here and then hopefully be able to get this started fairly simply that went a lot easier than I expected. Everybody said it was really hard to get those threads to start straight on there. Wasn't too bad. Now we'll just tighten it up with our wrench here. And now what we need to do is adjust our plunger here so that it will push our bullet. Once our bullet is through the die here, it will push it back out. Hopefully, that'll work. All right, <clears throat> so.
so that's pretty much the installation of that and then of course our top die here or our top punch comes with a little allen key as well and there's a little set screw right here so we're just gonna back that out push our top punch up in there and then tighten it down tighten down the set screw on our top punch and now we should be a we should be set up to load our 40 Smith and Wesson before we do that we want to go ahead and um, hook our heater up and let our lube warm up so that we can adjust our pressure for the bullets. So what I'm going to do is install, there's a hole right in the back here and our heater just slides right up in the back of it. What I'll do is put just a dab of oil on it. And then we plug it up. and it should get hot for us. <clears throat> Everything I've read says to plug it up and let it heat up for about 20 minute, 15 to 20 minutes and then unplug it and go from there um, because it'll get too hot or too, uh, too liquidy or whatever. So we're gonna, we're gonna let it run for a little bit and uh, I'll check the pressure on it and see how it does and then I'll be back with you guys. All right guys, so it's heated up now for about 30 minutes and uh, I've just slowly been adding a little bit of pressure as it heated up to our, uh, our cylinder here. And uh, I guess the best way to explain this is it's warm to the touch, but it's, it's not hot. Um, and I'm going to take one of the bullets. Now, I've already sized these bullets with my Lee sizer um, because it was before I got this, but I didn't pan lube them. I just sized them. So they should size pretty easily. But all we do is just run it down in there, and I've got my depth set here. you got to play with that a little bit and get that set the way you want it, and then run it back up. And then we take the bullet out. You have a beautiful uh, grease uh, line of grease in your grease groove there, and that really looks good. So, And it hardens pretty much as soon as you pull it out, I notice. So run a couple more in here. Let's run it down pull it back up and it's a nice even consistent um, line of bead of grease in that grease groove. It looks really good. So I think I'm going to be happy with this. Now um, I've done a few already and I noticed that once it gets to the point to where you'll have you'll have gaps in your grease just tighten it down a little bit and uh, go ahead and and run that same one through again and it'll fill in the cracks so um, I think overall it seems like a slower like that one see we've got a little bit of gap in there so we'll just get a little bit more pressure on it run it again and this should have filled in those yep it did so I, I think it's gonna seem like it takes longer because we're actually handling each bullet um, sizing it and lubing it but I think if you think about it um, you handled each bullet anyway if you run it through a lee sizer so run it and then you have to handle each one of them put it in the pan to pan lube it and I think this is really going to work out to be quicker and more efficient than sizing them and lubing them with a pan so I'm pretty excited about it I think it's going to be a good uh, good tool to have for bullet casting. Now, a lot of people will ask, well, why do we lube? What's the, what's the importance of uh, bullet lube? Well, there's a lot of Im importance behind it, but in this case, having a nice, solid line of grease in our grease groove there 
Well, um, one, it gives you a lot better muzzle velocity because it makes a better seal in the case. Um, makes a better seal in the barrel when it comes out of the case, thus keeping more of the velocity behind the bullet. So you're going to notice, if you switch to this, you're going to notice an increase in muzzle velocity. I can almost guarantee that right off of the bat. If you're using the same load, it's going to increase the muzzle velocity. Um, and then also, it's going to reduce, if you're using lead bullets, it's going to reduce the amount of fouling that you find in your barrel. So I think overall this would be a great investment for anybody that casts their own bullets. You know, we do everything to try to save as much money as possible, but when you get into making a lot of these, um, like uh, some of my friends now that I shoot with, they uh, will pay me 10 bucks per hundred to cast and lube the bullets. And uh, giving them a good consistent product is important to remain competitive when you can buy them for about ten bucks per hundred or eight bucks per hundred from a, from somebody on a bigger scale. So this gives you a good professional look and uh, results as well. So anyway guys, that's pretty much the process of setting up the Lee 45 or the Lyman 4500 Lubricizer and uh, how it works and the function of it. Uh, when you get low on grease, then you don't have to take the old grease out. You can just open up the cylinder, back the pressure off of it, open it up, and drop another lube stick in there. Um, and then to keep it full, you can cut your lube sticks uh, in half. If it won't take a whole lube stick, you can cut it in half and put it down in there and just add it to the top of whatever you're running already. So. Like I said, I think this is a great addition to uh, my bullet casting equipment, and uh, I hope that you enjoy yours as much as I'm enjoying mine right now. So anyway, guys, until next time, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.